season right yes. and especially in lahore so we've seen that the government has uh, initiated the holidays so that people's health could be protected from the darker skies from the polluted air and it is a matter of concern for us that how smog is a very prevalent and a very prominent feature which is uh, we are getting almost you know year by year every year and that is something very concerning and also hajra since we're living in a world which uh, which in which uh, one country impacts the others i True. think we should take advantage of how connected we are as a region and uh, work together for this uh, particular menace because obviously the government has taken the initiative of closing down schools for a few days and the government also should take i think more initiatives to perhaps save people from this particular uh, smog season because they say especially if i talk about mm -hmm. lahore particularly i was reading uh, something on the internet and it said if you're living in lahore uh, for a year that yes. means you have reduced 7 years of your life that's which was quite frightening and true. quite concerning and now that i see the smog it's actually frightening and it's ac especially for a person who's claustro claustrophobic i think uh, this is quite a hell that's true Th that's true for him thank you so much for uh, putting it out very succinctly and uh, smog is something it's a very transnational phenomena because our neighbor india is also getting impacted from that and since it's an industrial giant lot of smoke that is coming emitting yes. from that uh, area is also impacting lahore because lahore lies just across the india right and this transnational phenomena needs a collective effort of humanity to fight against it and i think one of the biggest success story that we need to late in order to combat this particular phenomena of smog is the china success story because beijing had a very darker sky had a very polluted air but uh, in the recent years the way they have tackled it and the way they have managed it it presents as a very good case study about how we can also adopt all of those measures in order to combat the smog because lahore is one of a very important city um, not just in terms of finance or in terms of uh, culture but also from the civilizational point of view and i think it's a very sad or a sorry state of affairs for us that the inhabitants of the lahore the residents of the lahore are getting impacted by such a concerning environment uh, environmental impact of the smog and the environmental impact and the health uh, impact that it's uh, going to have on mm -hmm. the people mm -hmm. in the form of asthma in the mm -hmm. form of allergies in the form of copd that's going to be a very uh, catastrophic i must say in the years to come especially the growing generation who's growing with the smog exactly. i think they're going to have a lot of uh, negative repercussions as far as the smog is concerned i used to find fog very uh, beautiful um, at, at once true. i mean uh, we true. still have uh, right. fog in slabad but right. now when i think of it it reminds me of the smog it reminds me of all the oh pulmonary diseases and yes. uh, it's quite frightening really right. and uh, talking about hajra uh, the the top stories for today and there is a good news for everyone who's out true. there listening to us the fuel prices have been reduced slashed, they have yes. been slashed by yes. prime minister and barul haq kakar and the new prices will be will take effect from today onwards also the federal government has uh, as we told you has reduced the prices uh, of petrol and high speed diesel uh, on wednesday and this was by 2.04 rupees for petrol and uh, 6.47 rupees per liter for high speed diesel and uh, now the price stands for petrol 281.34 and 296.71 respectively for petrol and diesel right uh, and i think that's a good news that we all needed to hear badly especially in this era of global inflation True. and uh, the prices of the uh, oil has also decreased in the international market so in pakistan we are also feeling the effects of that 
and they're very beautiful effects i might add that uh, but for him when we talk about smog when we talk about winter um, obviously whenever you go to lahore or especially people who have the opportunity to visit the lahore they can find that you can feel the effects of smog especially on your skin right and skin is the biggest organ uh, of our of body, body right yes. and i think it is um, uh, the bounty of allah subhanahu wa taala that we need to protect it it is the imana of allah subhanahu wa taala that we need to protect it and how in winters our skin is getting impacted what do we need to do uh, and especially people who because the dryness is a very prominent features uh, of the winters how do we need to protect ourselves from the dryness um, and what are the other of the skin conditions um, that are uh, caused in the winters we are going to talk about it so without further monopolizing our conversation we would like to introduce our very beautiful guest who has graced us in our studio and her presence is a uh, very beautifying i would say so we are very glad that we have been joined by dr noreen sarfaraz who happens to be a consultant dermatologist assalam alaikum and thank you so much for coming to our wa show wa alaikum assalam and thanks for having me in the show it's a pleasure having you it's lovely having you dr noreen now dr yeah. noreen we we have been talking about smog and the effects of smog obviously like hajra said skin is the most exposed True. and the most mm -hmm. biggest organ mm -hmm. of the body mm -hmm. now uh, we would like to know what kind of effects does winter in general have on the skin and especially those who are living in the smog affected areas definitely winter is now here and the temperature has been dropping and we are just entering in this new season of the year and some of the people already have dry skin and the winter triggers the worst of it mm -hmm. and even some of us who don't face this issue in most months of the year can have it at some point of the year right. and uh, however any one of us can have the dry skin in this uh, month because mm -hmm. uh, we are exposed to the environment which has low humidity yes. and dry and uh, of course as we have discussed about the smoke there's a lot of pollution which True. not only dries the skin but it irritates the skin as well and the additional factor which it brings to it is the dryness of uh, respiratory tract and aggravating the uh, symptoms of the patients who are already having the dryness of the skin eczema specifically atopic eczema and the other skin conditions and the reason for this is obvious as we are surrounded by the dry air cold air holds less moisture right. mm. so we are surrounded by it and automatically our skin can't hold much of the moisture in it Right, so right. Dr. Anorin, we have uh, been hearing there are lots of conversation regarding the climate change and how the UV rays are getting very uh, pertinent and very stronger because mm -hmm. of the damaging of the uh, what do you call the ozone layer. Yes. Uh, so now let's talk about the skin cancers, which is becoming a very prominent feature. Um, so. is there any difference between the skin color so for example people who are caucasian who have white skin mm -hmm. are they more prone to getting skin cancers as compared to people who have asian skins or they have the brown skins and what do you recommend um, as a good health care skin care routine for the people definitely uh, you have pointed out a very a uh, good point and it first of all we have a uh, fit patrick skin type 4 we have a scale of the skin in which we categorize it according our exposure right. to ultraviolet radiations it's fit spectric skin type 1 2 and further till the 6 okay. and we asian south asians uh, fall in the category of the 4 and 5 right. right. we are lucky in a sense that mm -hmm. we have enough melanin in our skin right. so it is also acting as a physical barrier protecting Wonderful. our skin our body against the harmful ultraviolet radiations so it is acting as a natural physical sunscreen mm -hmm. and the people think most of the time that it is winter here and sunscreens are only made when the temperature is hot outside mm -hmm. but it is not the mm -hmm. case mm -hmm. even in the winter the sun is there outside and it can be as bright as in any other season as in the summer mm -hmm. so we are exposed to the ultraviolet radiations as our ozone layer is also decreasing there is mm -hmm. much of the air pollution and so you have to include this sunscreen or some log in your routine to avoid the uh, as we have talked about the skin cancers mm -hmm. the most prominent and the most discussed are squamous cell carcinoma and basal yes. cell carcinoma 
we are lucky in the sense that we have less ratio of this Achoo. in our population yeah. as compared to the people who have Fitzpatrick skin type 1 to the population who belongs to European area. It is uh, naturally gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the people who are living near to the equator are more exposed to the ultraviolet radiations. They have more sun exposure. Mm -hmm. so and they have more resilience. Yes, so they been. naturally have right. a darker skin as compared to the people who are residing in the northern pole or right. southern pole. As they move away from the equator, our skin color becomes lighter and we are more prone to have the cancers or other kind of these things. Right, and also uh, right. whenever we talk to a dermatologist, we either right. speak to uh, about a, a dry skin True. or we speak about oily skin. Mm -hmm. What about the skin type which has both? And extremities of both, extreme dry skin in some patches, extreme oily skin in some patches, especially the T-zone. Yes, yes. Very well said. Uh, actually, we have the five skin types if we categorize according to the nature as you have already mentioned. Mm -hmm. First is the dry skin, then is the very dry skin, then is the oily skin, which is more prone to the acne, then is the combination skin, mm -hmm. which is uh, sensitive. And the other one, last one is the patients who have a topic eczema. They have very, very combination and the sensitive skin as well. So the people who already have dry skin, the winter, just brings the worst of it and the people who have oily skin combination skin it triggers them to some point at the dry level and uh, the white patches are appeared on the face and even on the hands and they are appeared as an uneven skin tone and, and this is season specifically when we will be sitting near to the heaters and we will just put our hands in front of the heaters they will turn more a kind of pigmented blackish more dry because mm -hmm. of our uh, love to the heaters as the temperature is dropping and uh, mm -hmm. we will be more interested in the keeping ourselves warm mm -hmm. and um, so the thing is that um, we should um, just not only protect ourselves from uh, right. uh, keeping ourselves hydrated but also take the measures and do follow it regularly to keep our skin healthy when our skin will be healthy it will uh, keep us healthy mm -hmm. because it acts as a barrier against the external environment. Mm -hmm. When anything will be damaging to it, it will lead to a disease. Mm -hmm. So it is very uh, important uh, organ, as we have mentioned, largest organ of the body. We are wearing it all the time. We should pamper it equally as we pamper about the other stuff. Right, and uh, this is the time of the period, especially winters, where we South Asians like to indulge ourselves in the sunbathing, probably on our ter terrace, mm -hmm. uh, eating peanuts or maybe having the oranges and whatnot. Uh, so uh, what sort of recommendation would you give to people who uh, do that? Do you think it's, uh, I mean, perfectly fine go out and uh, have the sunbathing? Or do you feel that you know, we should have a strong uh, sunscreens and sunblocks? And what is the difference between both of them? Mm -hmm. And especially the young bonds, the new bonds, because mothers like to keep them out in the terraces. So mm -hmm. is this a healthy practice? What do you recommend? Definitely. Uh, you are right that uh, people are more interested in sun bathing during the winter. Mm -hmm. But as we mentioned, we are skin uh, type 4 or 5. So we are more prone to have tanning as compared to the burning. Okay. The people who have more whitish color or skin type 1, 2, 3, they are more likely to burn as compared to us. So there are more chances that you will get tanning if you will be staying in outdoors for a longer period of time mm -hmm. without applying the sunblock. It is a very must factor. As we have mentioned, people think that sunblock is required only in the summer season and the sun will spare us in the winter. This is not the case and okay. we should realize it that there are ultraviolet radiations and as there is decrease of ozone layer they are hitting us the same way though there are clouds as well at that time when the lights we are surrounded by in our home in our offices there are uh, ultraviolet, ultraviolet radiation type c even they are having the harmful effect on our face 
So we should apply the sunscreen for it and in this category we have two types of sunscreens mm -hmm. available. One is the physical sunscreen and the other is the chemical sunscreen. Okay. Physical sunscreen is mostly used by the sports person. Right. You might have noticed they're having the thick layer of whitish cream yes, and yes. that is a strong physical sunscreen to uh, protect themselves from the harmful radiations. However, we people, we mostly prefer the chemical sunscreen yes. because it is not uh, appeared on our faces and is uh, comfortable to apply. However, the important thing is that we should reapply it after the two hours, which is not practiced uh, mostly in our people. They prefer to apply it once and they think that it will work the whole day, but this is not the case. You should no, apply no, it to all the exposed areas since of you're your body. you're talking about application and reapplication, you're, you're right. And, and it's a very important thing because mm. I was also watching a video. Mm. They used a fruit and applied UV radiations by applying a BB cream and yes. night right. cream and sunscreen. Right, right. And uh, the least affected fruit was the one uh, on which they had applied the sunscreen. But having said that, there are some people, like I said uh, previously as well, they have uh, oily skin issue mm -hmm. and yes. uh, they feel that this is a quite a tedious thing, applying yes. it again and again on your face uh, before you go out anywhere mm -hmm. applying mm -hmm. the sunscreen mm -hmm. because it makes your face more oily. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, I mean, a mm -hmm. very tiresome job and cumbersome job. So what do you say to those people who have this particular issue? Yes, definitely. Uh, the importance of sunscreen is on the top of every skin care routine. Mm -hmm. Either you are taking the anti-aging treatment, skin rejuvenation treatment or any kind of the treatment for the pigmentation because it acts as anti-aging, it rejuvenates your skin as well. For the people who have combination skin or sensitive skin, yes, they are more uh, reluctant to apply the sunblock because they think that their face will look greasy and uh, they can't apply it. However, there are uh, such category of sunblocks available in the market, which has written SC with it. It is uh, like the sebum control. Mm -hmm. Like it will control your sebum, which is your sweat. So your glands will not be obstructed and you might not face the issue of greasiness or uh, acne formation in the future. It is easy to apply. So the people who have combination skin, acne prone skin, sensitive skin, they should use the sunblock which have uh, the factor written sebum control and sebum a broad control. spectrum which covers both the UVA and the UVB radiations. And the other people are blessed, they can use uh, the normal sunscreens which are for normal to dry skin. And even the sunscreens are available in the form of the powder as uh, the, you mentioned that what should be uh, the application for the people who have oily skin, they can use the uh, powder form of the sunblock. However, they should be cautious that it should not be inhaled. Mm. And the sunscreen in the spray form is also available. It depends on you that which uh, is uh, comfortable for you to use or apply. Right, I and, and wa please walk us through a good skincare routine, especially for the dry skin in the winters. And what is the particular age after we need to be more careful about our skin, um, especially when we are talking in this very, I would say, a cosmetic surgery because people are focusing so much on their skin cares and on their, uh, I mean, general upbringing and, and polishing themselves. So please go ahead. Yes. One should focus on the skincare because you are wearing it all the time. Mm. Like the females are more concerned about the jewelry, about the dresses. So why not about your skin? Mm. You're wearing it all the time. It represents you. It boosts your confidence if it is good. And it makes you feel good and your mental health is boosted up by it. And um, so the skincare is very important. It is not just a miracle. Mm. It never happens in a night time. It's not, not a night miracle. You have to follow your skincare routine. So uh, for the ladies who apply makeup, you should a good cleanser, double cleanse your skin. Because in the winter, the people who wear makeup, they can have small acne-like um, uh, rashes. Yes. And they are confused that it's not a acne and uh, we can't uh, identify it, but they are small papules, which we call it in language, that they are formed in the skin and make the face look bad. So uh, for the females, they should double cleanse their face. Mm. And in the winter, we should basically emphasize for the hydration. And when I talk about hydration, I mean the hydration from inside to outside. First is that we should drink very large amount of water. 
to keep ourselves hydrated as we are exposed to outdoor harsh weather and the indoor heating system. So we are more prone to dryness and dehydration right. in addition with the coffee drinks. So hydration is important. 3.7 liters is the average you should have. Then it again depends on your activity. If you are having indoor activity, you require less amount of water. And if you have a outdoor activity, you might require large amount of water. And then talking about the skin, skin care, good cleanser, gentle cleanser is very important. Just treat your skin like a baby and there should be a good moisturizer. Right moisturizer for your skin type, like if we have dry skin, we will use oil based moisturizer. If you have acne prone skin, sensitive combination skin, you will use the water based uh, moisturizer or you can use these serums like hyaluronic acid serums, vitamin C serums and uh, the people who have normal or dry to normal skin, they can apply the uh, serums and then they can apply the moisturizer as well after it. And please avoid the hot steaming bath, though it is very <laughs> yes. um, pleasant and yes. standing to sound, but uh, it just dries out your moisture and mm -hmm. your natural oil on your body is even uh, taken out because of the hot steamy showers yes. and then it's uh, just have a good food good nutrition represents you are a lot you are what you eat True. and don't forget the sunblock and for the night care routine mm -hmm. we prefer that if you have some issues then you should target use your target treatments if you are having pigmentation and de-aging use retinol and if you are here having the issue of the dryness then use a good anti-rejuvenating uh, good uh, serums or the creams at the also, night. Also, uh, Dr. Saiba, like you have been uh, focusing and stressing a lot on usage of uh, sunscreen, of course. But uh, another question that arises is, how do we know which sunscreen is right for us? Because some yes. people develop allergies, some people develop itching, or uh, sure. irritability in the mm. skin. How do we decide that? Uh, that's very easy. We in the market are lucky now to have a wide variety of the choices. You can pick a good sunscreen, but I would like you to uh, give a bit piece of advice that ask your dermatologist, visit them, don't try it your own because uh, you can't ignore your skin and uh, we can't just take risks by asking and taking advice of the common people hmm. because you are investing your money as well, your energies as well and everything and return if it doesn't suit you you are like disheartened and you don't want to use it and you discard your skincare routine so speaking about us we should use the broad spectrum uva and uvb sunblock it protects us against bones harmful radiations and the uh, process which damages the deeper layer of our skin and for the asian people we use the sunblock which is uh, above spf 30. I see. And uh, mm -hmm. you can have, the, if you are having uh, outdoor activities more like um, you're going on a hiking, you're a sports person at least, then you should use a sunblock which is having SPF of 100. And uh, there are for available normal to dry moisturizer, different kind of skins. And sunblock not only protects your skin from the harmful radiations, but it also acts as a moisturizer which prevents your skin from further dryness in the winter season. Right, right. And uh, Dr. Saiba, we've also seen that uh, in winters you have seen, uh, we have seen that there are lots of chapped lips and they have, uh, there's the itchiness on the skin and then there's dryness on the skin. So how to protect ourselves from that particular condition because it is a very prominent feature. Yes. Uh, in winter. And one thing I would like to add on is that we have cracked heels sometimes. Oh yes, oh yes. Most of the time in the winter season. And the reason is that we don't take care of our um, feet and hands as much we take care of our face and hairs now. Mm. We should not neglect them. They are part of us as well. Of course, of course. So always use the gentle uh, soaps or hand washes which don't dry your skin. And some uh, of the uh, hand washes or the soaps can bring the dryness into your skin and even right. irritant, it can act as an irritant if it doesn't suit you. Right. So right. scrub your hands, body, face, even feet as well mm -hmm. and apply the urea based moisturizer mm -hmm. on your uh, 
cracked heels and talking about their lip balm. They are uh, emollients which are oil based, they are good to apply on your uh, lips and now even they have the sunblock as well. Right and thank you so much Dr. Saiba for shedding the light on the winters and the skincare problems that we all face and one thing that we would like to our audience to take away from this entire segment is that protect yourself protect your skin because it is the largest organ right and it is our responsibility to make sure that this bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this imanat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we take full responsibility of it right and with that we will end our segment and once again thank Dr. Saiba for coming here for uh, shedding the light on the skincare problems and we will go on a short break after we come back we have a very interesting discussion lined up that too with a young bar uh, will represent us so don't worry Welcome back to World This Morning with Hajra Satya and Fahim Bangush. And as we were telling you before the break, and in the second segment, there is something really, really interesting. Mm. And uh, well, because whenever it comes to music, whenever it comes to creativity, when it, whenever it comes to artist community, I find it extremely interesting and very exciting. And without further ado, I think I will introduce our guest for today. We have uh, Mohammed Ahmed with us, who is a pianist, who is a singer. Ahmed, welcome to PTV World and a very good morning. Good morning to you too. Thank you so much for having me here. It's an honor and I'm really excited to, for today. Right. So, Ahmed, how old are you and how did you venture into this, uh, you know, field of having the piano and uh, having this, uh, you know, wonderful voice that you have? I'm 17 years old. Yeah. Um, when I was six or seven years old, yes. my mum would sit me down and teach me how to sing. Mm -hmm. I would hate it then, right. but now as I grow older, yes. I've learned to appreciate it and I like singing now. Um, the piano, my sister, when she was younger, she, um, she passed grade one for right. music in mm -hmm. piano. And so we had a keyboard at home. It's, an, it's a really old keyboard. Right. And so I used to practice on that a lot. Right. Um, as I grew up, I also learned how to play the piano as well. Right, and right. I loved piano as I grew up. Um, gradually, I started, le started learning music mm -hmm. theory. Mm -hmm. And then my dad bought me this, and now I'm here. Right. And you learned music theory from? I s I I'm self-taught, yes. Oh, excellent, amazing. You know, Hadra, it's so interesting that uh, the young generation, they have YouTube to self-teach. Mm -hmm. yes. They have YouTube to, yes. you know, get into it, channelize their energies into these creative things. So, um, do you also compose music or is it just that you just play music or just uh, pass your time in singing? That's it. Um, I don't comp compose music. Right. Maybe one day because I want to be able to compose music for my... I want a story tell in the future. Wonderful. So, composing music is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. um, for now, it's a weird thing. I don't really listen to a lot of music. Mm -hmm. well, sometimes when I do, it's mostly because of studying. Right. But when I do study and I listen to music, I like a song and then I just get to it and I learn that song and that's it. That's how I sing. And what sort, but the of, piano, music? Um, what sort of music Pop music use? mostly. Pop Western music. pop music, yes. And right. on the piano, classical music. Oh, lovely. Yes. lovely. And, and, and who is your role model, if I ask you, you know, who inspires you? And obviously, after that, we would like to listen to some of your composition oh, or whatever you, you call it. Um, I'm inspired by my mom, first of all, because she has a beautiful voice. She doesn't oh, really sing a lot, but she does not and stuff. Right. And so she knows how to produce a wonderful voice. Wonderful. Um, my teacher right now, Mr. Amir Ahmed, he's right. also a wonderful teacher, brilliant teacher. Right. He knows how to involve himself, he knows how to teach, and so he's also a role, role model for me. Right. That's right. lovely, amazing. Can we listen to something? Um, I'm, I'm sure, really um, looking forward to it. And do you want me to sing or do you want me to oh, play? Oh, it's up both? to you. Okay. What is in your code? So I 
guess I gotta stay now Oh, I hope someday I'll make it out of here Even if it takes all night Or a hundred years need a place to hide But I can't find one near one to feel alive outside I can't fight my fear Is it lovely, alone Heart made of glass, my mind of stone Tear me to pieces, skin and bone Hello, welcome home Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thing and what you did in the end, that's particularly difficult. Thank you, it's say. called head voice. I'm I sure you know, voice. you told me before that you sing as well. Yes. How, where did you find your inspiration? Um, well, <laughs> to talk about an interviewee, yeah. like the interviewer question, <laughs> all right. That, that's wonderful, <laughs> because uh, I think um, Fahim, if you're getting a praise from a Fahim, it means a lot, because Fahim <laughs> is very parti particular yeah. about uh, the pronunciation and about yeah. the singing, and he's Thank very you. passionate about what he does. Mm. Uh, but Emma, tell us about yourself, uh, where did you grow up, and uh, what are your other hobbies apart from, you know, uh, yes, PM? I have a I believe that balance is key and so I have a lot of different hobbies. Oh, wonderful. And um, recently I went to a college of arts and I learned how to sketch and draw. Oh, wonderful. Before that, I would love to s draw, but I didn't really know how to. <laughs> and so I would try again and again and I would always fail. And so I went to the college of arts and now I can draw. Wonderful. I love to bake. I love to cook because um, growing up I had two sisters and so they would bake and cook and I thought it was cool. Oh, wonderful. So <laughs> now I can bake amazing cookies. Oh, you have wonderful. to try my cookies. I'm the best cookie baker. So you would like to have some of your cookies someday, yeah, sure, right? Some yeah, someday, sure. Amazing. Um, I love to read as well and write. Well, what do you read? I read fantasy and fiction that's, that's mostly. That's something that <laughs> both of us are particularly yes. interested yes, in. Yes. Oh, okay. So um, What sort of genre do you read? A fantasy and fiction. And authors? Uh, J. Colin and right. uh, J. I don't know really uh, a lot about uh, authors, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> but books, um, Sherlock Holmes, I really love it. Mm -hmm. And then The Hound of Baskerville, I'm pretty sure it's right. the same series. The Harry Potter books. Classics, right? Love them mostly. so much. Yes, mm. yes. I love Harry Potter. Same. <laughs> yes, I think, I think we grew up with the Harry Potter. It's something that this generation will not <laughs> yeah. know about it. And we are very sad about it, right, Fahim? Uh, because Harry Potter is, uh, is a, I, I mean, once in a while a phenomena that has yes. um, hit the... It's the just a different world, really. Mm. And I think all the students uh, in the schools, uh, do people get inspired by you in your school when you go there, when you perform in the school on the stage? I mean, um, do people draw any inspiration that, okay, this kid is doing so much, I think we should do? I hope so. <laughs> um, a lot of people uh -huh. um, tell me that I sing, I sing well and I play the piano well and that really excites me because um, when you're singing or you're doing something good, a lot of people are salty about it and they want you to be put down. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you things that are not really true, but they want you to be negative about yourself mm -hmm. because yeah. they feel that they're, they, they're not a good place in life. Yeah. And so they want you to be the same way. And so combating that with the people who actually praise you, um, I think that really matters a lot to me. Mm -hmm. um, inspiration, we have a band at school. Um, and so Ahmed Khan, he's another singer. He's a classical singer. Right. Both of us draw inspiration from each other. Oh, Amazing, <laughs> really. And when you ask me where I drew my inspiration mm -hmm. from, it's the same as you, my mother and my teacher. Wonderful. Mm. Although he's passed away now, but... Okay. Uh, I mean, I remember the things that he taught me as far as music is concerned, as far as, you know, uh, uh, Hindustani classical music mm -hmm. is concerned. But right now we're talking about you, mm -hmm. not okay. me. Yes. Okay. So we would love to listen to something else from you as well, because this is something that we're here to promote you. We're here to talk about the youth of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. We're here to tell the world how talented the youth of Pakistan you so is. Yes. So go ahead. Okay.
Oh, that's lovely. Wonderful. And I think Madhra. these fresh bouts of melody entering your ears is certainly a delight. Did you see uh, how soothing it was? It was, it was. It was lovely. And that is why they say that art does not have any boundary, right? True uh, music does not have any boundary and you can always feel within your soul uh, whenever you hear a good melody and whenever you hear uh, a good piece of art, right? No, absolutely. Because, you know, uh, I, I was thinking just right now, I was thinking how busy I've gotten with my life that I've uh, put my music at the back burner. I don't practice it anymore. Oh. Uh, but I should, and I just drew some inspiration from you. <laughs> and uh, that's lovely. You did. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I, I, think, I think I should start from today onwards, really. <laughs> sure, we can jam some days <laughs> well. <laughs> no, definitely. I, I loved it uh, because um, all the musicians who e ever played with me, I love them all, I respect them all and you sing as well, along with playing the music. So yeah, definitely. So what about your um, future plans? What about, yes. what do you want to become? Do you want to keep it as a passion, as a profession, or do you want to keep it as a, you know, a side business and you want to complete your education as well? Obviously you will complete your education, but do you want to pursue your education in the same field? Um, I want to do computer science in the future. Oh, All wonderful. Right. But I want to go into storytelling and game development. Right. So with game development, you need a lot of um, knowledge about music because you need to compose yes. and to draw, in, to draw emotions and feeling into your stories. You yes. need to be able to have good music into the stories. Now see, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. That's true. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, so um, I need to keep this as a passion and a side hustle as well so that I can incorporate this into my computer science and game development business that inshallah I want to open up. Hadra and I were talking yesterday how brilliant it is that people, children of today, the youngsters of today, they know exactly what they want exactly. to do in life. And uh, it's so um, amazing that uh, on one hand you play music, you love music, and on the other, you know that you will be incorporating this in your professional field. I'm truly impressed, really. Thank you, thank you so right. much. Right, and Ahmed, we are wishing you best of luck for your future ventures, and we would uh, like to listen more of your melodies in our coming shows, uh, because sure. obviously it was very soothing for us, and especially in the early hours of the morning, we need to hear uh, such relaxing tones, such relaxing uh, uh, melodies that soothes our nerves and that soothes us um, as a whole, because I think there's a lot of pain in this world, right, and we need to to somehow decrease that or learn from that um, and uh, with that we will uh, once again say thank you to Ahmed for coming here thank you so uh, much for having me absolute thank pleasure. you so much for having me it was an absolute pleasure having you here and uh, with that we will say Allah Hafiz and bid you farewell and until next time it's a goodbye and good morning